Hey, hope you're well. So I mentioned in passing in the recent vlog uh, that I'd bought a table saw, the new Festool Sustainer saw, the little one. And amongst all the usual, you can get a proper panel saw for that many comments, I had a lot of folks ask me what the other saws were that I considered while I was on the path that led me to the little Festool cordless trim saw. So I thought I'd do a quick video about them and about that whole process. So I'm a track saw guy. Uh, that's how I've always cut the majority of my materials. And I worked wood for a living for, I think, about 14 years without owning or using a table saw. Since then, I've always had a table saw. I just never found much use for them or really had the need for them. But doing the Mondrian style table hilariously at a time when I didn't own a table saw, that really did stretch me to the point where it would have been very convenient to have something for small, very precise cuts, particularly in smaller work pieces. Now, my needs for a table saw are really very specific. I have a small workshop, so I was after a small saw that would fit the space I have, small footprint and small capacity. The workshop's in a busy building with other people working all around me, to one side, above me, and behind me, so I need a quiet saw. It needs to be accurate for small, precise cuts, otherwise, what's the point? And it needs to have great dust collection because this place is like a brick bunker with precious little in the way of natural ventilation. If I was gonna go down the cast iron route, and in the past I've had an eight inch bench top cast iron table saw and a larger 12 inch aluminium sliding table cabinet saw. Uh, if I was gonna go down the cast iron route, a 10 inch saw made more sense because bigger saws tend to be better made even though they'd typically have more capacity than I'd need. But for historical and environmental reasons, and I mean my own immediate environment here in the workshop, not the tree-hugging eco-green variety, uh, there is zero, zip, nada, zilch, absolutely no freaking chance of getting a 16 amp power supply into the workshop, which does restrict things somewhat. I also wanted a new saw rather than a project. I know there's plenty of vintage, dark green, cast iron wonderfulness around, but that's just not what I want to do. I did briefly have my head turned by a 1970s vintage start right that was fully refurbished and available at a good price. It was small and it was quiet, but it was also a couple of inches taller than my benches with no way to reduce that short of digging up the floor, which would have caused issues. Also, dust collection just wasn't a consideration when it was made. And anyway, this is a commercial workspace and I want something that complies with all the current safety standards and regulations to ensure that my insurance isn't void just when I needed it the most. And if you don't think that an insurance company would use a non-compliant piece of equipment or machinery to get out of settling a claim, then think again. Cost, of course, is always a consideration but I'm fortunate that it wasn't the main one for this purchase and these 15 or so saws that I looked at started from around 400 pounds and topped out at around 2,500 all including the AT which I decided was the most I was prepared to spend on something like this for the kind of use that it'll get. So when you first start looking at new table saws in that kind of price range it seems like there are loads to choose from but first on the list was for the saw to be quiet and with great dust collection. So at a stroke, that rules out all the portable side saws like the Bosch GTS-10, the DeWalt 745, the Hikoki 36 volt or the Milwaukee cordless. I'm sure they're all fine saws when used as intended. And I know from watching many YouTube videos that they can be made to work very accurately, but you can't get around the racket that they make or the dust that they produce. With no chance of a 16 amp supply in here, that also rules out the bigger cabinet saws like the SIP, 01332 at around 1700 pounds or just under and the strikingly similar itech 01332 currently on offer at about 1140 bargain uh, also the axminster ap25 4ps13 at around 1700 which is a great shame as that axminster was looking really good even if it did come with a whole bunch of stuff I'll never use. Yeah, that's a theme right there. With those off the list, the pickings are getting slimmer, though not slim enough. There's the Laguna Fusion 2 at 2400 that runs off a 13 amp socket, but it's just too flipping big for the space I have. There's a couple of saws from Charnwood. There's a W629 on offer now at about 970, or the beefier W650 at closer to 1300 pounds. But both saws come with sliding tables and large extensions, which I'll never use and, you guessed it, would need to be stored somewhere. Next was the Lumberjack 10-inch hybrid saw. There's not that much information out there about it, though I believe there may be some coming along shortly. Uh, one of my Plus members has one, 
but they mentioned that they were likely to replace it with an Axminster benchtop saw. Sean in the Shed has done a good review on the saw, but on YouTube you'll probably find more about the American rigid branded saw that appears to be identical. And call me shallow, but this saw was a lot more interesting to me when it was priced lower at around £650 to £700. Priced where it is now at £900 to £1000, it gets pitched into some slightly awkward comparisons like the Charnwood I mentioned before, where I think you'd really need to want what this kind of hybrid cast iron sight saw fusion offers to be swayed that way when for not much more money you could be buying something more traditional with a bit more consumer feedback available on it too. So that wipes out most of the saws on the list but before I get to the two remaining let's spend a minute on the saws that didn't even make it into the list at all. Saw stop look like great saws but they're just not sold here in the UK or Europe. If you're not aware, Sawstop has been a wholly owned subsidiary of Festool parent company TTS Technic since about 2017, I think. And for whatever reason, the Sawstop flesh sensing tech is only available here in the Festool TKS80, a saw that I'm afraid I just don't like. Uh, same goes for the Festool Precisio CS50 and CS70. And while we're at it, let's throw the Mafel Erica under the bus as well, though that's already off the list due to cost. That left two Axminster saws at different ends of the spectrum. There's the Axminster Workshop AW254TS, which is a benchtop cast iron saw. It's the one that YouTubing woodworker Powson has built a bench around. The 10 inch saw comes in at a little under £850, but the price jumps to over 1000 if you add a mobile base and a side extension. But the really bad news is that you just can't buy one. They're all on back order, and they seem to have been that way for quite a while. Also, my first table saw was the older 8 inch version of this saw, and I wasn't overly impressed by it other than how well it held its value. The other Axminster option was the professional AP254LTS. Uh, it's a bigger cabinet saw that once again comes with stuff I don't need that would have to be stored somewhere. Space is at a premium and so is cash and at £2,500 it was the most expensive saw on the list and the absolute top of my budget. And as it happens, like its smaller workshop brother, it's also on back order. Now if it wasn't for the back order situation, I would have bought the Axminster Workshop A254TS, the benchtop cast iron saw, and built myself a Powson style bench around it. Let's be blunt, if it's accurate enough for him it probably is for us too. But the sad fact is that we can't buy one, so against that slightly bleak backdrop of whittling a long list down to a short list only to find nobody ready to take my money, there was the Festool CSC SIS50, the sustainer saw. It is small, it is quiet, it seems accurate and it has great dust extraction. It is also cordless which you don't need or want particularly, but as I said in the vlog I decided not to let that stop me from buying one as it ticked all the other boxes. I paid just under £1700 for the saw with a pair of Bluetooth batteries and a dual charger. I don't have it yet, but they have started shipping this week, I'm told, so fingers crossed it won't be too long. Here's the thing though, with any big ticket purchase, there's a little bit of a leap of faith in the buying process, because you never truly know how something's gonna work out for you until you get it back into your own workspace and settled in. I don't know how this is gonna work out for me. I'm sure there'll be a honeymoon period where everything's shiny and new and wonderful, and then there'll be a period of adjustment once the shine comes off it a bit. And then in the longer term, that's when you really see how it all stacks up. And honestly, it might be terrible. It might be completely the wrong thing for me in this space, just like my previous 12 inch aluminium cabinet saw was. And if that's the case, then I'll just chalk it down to experience and move it on. But right now, it feels like it's gonna be the Goldilocks saw for me, just right in terms of size and capacity, noise, dust extraction, all the things that were at the top of my wish list at the very start. It is an expensive saw at £1,700 including that. It'll be the most expensive individual power tool I own and hands down my most costly cordless tool. But I've got to spend my YouTube millions somehow so I'm prepared to give it a shot. Uh, but that is how I got to this point. Uh, I'll leave it there for now and I'll catch it in the next one when who knows maybe I'll actually have the saw in my hands or at least have a cabinet to show you. Uh, thanks for taking a look and I'll see you then.